Unless Bond wants us with some uh, singing and dancing. Hell no. I'm leaving, bro. I'm closing this browser, bro. Vaughn, Vaughn sing, making my way downtown. <laughs> That's perfect. East Asia Super League, the emerging basketball league for Asia, now brings you Ballerific, a new show featuring the best professional ballers from around the region. Up close and personal. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this session of Ballerific, uh, powered to you by East Asia Super League. Good evening, sports fans. Welcome to another episode of Ballerific, featuring pro hoop stars from across East Asia. Thank you for joining us as we get up close and personal with some of the region's top ballers. Ballerific is brought to you by East Asia Super League, the premier pro basketball competition this side of the Pacific. My name is Alex Olin. I'm joined by Banjo Albano. Today we have two guests that were competing on different teams, but also had the opportunity to play together most recently at the East Asia Super League Terrific 12. So our first guest, alumni of Old Westbury Panthers, where as a senior he averaged 19 points and 13 rebounds per game. He's been around the world playing the game. Stops in Sweden, Canada, Britain, Spain, Mexico, Venezuela, Philippines, and currently playing for Indonesia Patriots at the Indonesia Basketball League where he averaged 18 points and 13 rebounds per game. Mr. Lester Prosper, welcome Lester. Thanks for coming on. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Vaughn, What's Alex, up, man? Bonjo, what's up, baby? What's good, Les? Enjoying Lester tonight. Uh, we have one of the deadliest shooters in the Philippine basketball today. Um, he graduated from Ateneo de Manila University with two UAP championships under his belt. He was drafted by the Gilas Filipina Special Draft by Globalport in 2016. And since then, he's been a member of three championships with the San Miguel Beer Men. Please welcome Mr. Vaughn Pesimal. What's good, Vaughn? Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Vaughn? Let's go. Thanks for joining us, guys. So, Lester, your basketball journey eventually brought you to Asia. Can you talk to us a little bit about the experience of playing in so many different places, different teams, different styles, different crowds, and, and different cultures? Uh, Philippines fans are very passionate. Indonesian fans are very passionate. Um, Dominican Republic fans, passionate. Europe, Europe, the fans are the same. The game is different. Um, in the Philippines, of course, you know, they want you to score a little more. Um, they want you to basically uh, do, a, do a little bit of everything as an import. You know, and also get your teammates involved in, in Dominican Republic, same thing. In Europe, it's a little more just playing your role kind of um, situation. You're big, you play the big role, you know? So that's what you that's what you do. And um, that's the difference between Asia and um, Europe and, and the Caribbean um, Basketball League and with Venezuela and all that, which is part of the Caribbean Basketball League. Is there is there a particular place that you miss or that maybe you're looking forward to getting back to? Um, Philippines, definitely. Philippines. Um, by the way, I love um, I love playing in England. You know, so that that was good too. You know, I really really love playing there also. So you know, once you have a, a great experience on a team as you know as an import, you know you will you will you will want to go back as any player. You know, as any player, they have a an experience, a great experience on a team wherever they go. They want to go back to that situation. So, so Vaughn, I'm gonna swing it over to you. You know, you went to the same grade school as Kiefer Ravenna at the NAO, you know, before entering the PBA. And how does, you know, that whole experience being blue-blooded at the NAO? You know, it's, it's been a different kind of journey for me because uh, most of my uh, teammates now uh, were recruited to play uh, high school, college in the Philippines. And uh, as for me, you know, I was, I was just a normal student in Ateneo. Um, I just like to play basketball. Um, my parents weren't, you know, athletes or anything like that. So uh, I just I, ha I made it through the journey it, somehow. I don't know how, but um, you know it's, it's been fun looking back. Ateneo has taught me a lot of lessons, um, just just uh, off the court, on the court. I think uh, one of my advantages um, coming in is um, I'm always thinking about uh, the long term goal, um, and I think basketball is kind of you know it's not not forever, right? So. I was able to um, invest in education a lot. 
um, and I'm thinking about things of what I'm gonna do after basketball. So, but right now, obviously, I'm enjoying uh, being a professional. Uh, I'm sure everybody in the in the in the industry enjoys it, um, and I'm just trying to make the most out of it. And I'm just so thankful to be playing in the PBA. Um, I was able to participate in, in your league, and which is crazy because if you told me that when I was in Ateneo as a student, I would have never said I would be playing in Macau or something like that to play basketball. So it, it's been cool, man. You know, you transitioned to the pro side now in the PBA. You know, talk to us, talk to us about that transition of like elevating your game with each step and not being in the PBA. Well, uh, you said it best, man. Uh, you know, you got to stay in the gym a lot. Um, you got to try to find a way to improve and no matter what the circumstance is. And you, you know well, because uh, Banjo would invite me over to some runs, 5 on 5 runs, and I was a skinny little kid. <laughs> <laughs> Grown men. But, you know, I was, that's, when I, that's, when, that's when you at your, at your best, you know, when you're playing against uh, players who are better than you, older than you, more experienced than you. The transition from uh, from amateur level, especially in the Philippines, to the pro level, I think it's it's quite a big, big, uh, big jump. Uh, the level of physicality is so much more different in the pros. You know, I was skinny, I was very raw, but I had lots of help all along, along the way. People told me what to do and a lot of uh, examples to follow on. So, yeah, it's it's been fun. Uh, it's definitely not easy. It was a hard journey, but. Uh, looking back, it was I would do it all over again. It's always great to hear about the journey. And so far, we're getting a treat. It's an offensive show right here. A lot of firepower. Lester Prosper. That's Prosper three for three. Oh, Lester, uh, we also wanted to ask you what it was like playing with uh, playing with and against Vaughn. Do you have any behind the scenes stories for us? You know, I don't have any I don't have any back stories about playing with Vaughn, but I can tell you he he's a sniper. You know what I mean? He he always tries to be in the the right spots at the right time and 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 playing playing against him. I didn't really think about him while I was while I was playing. I don't really think about anybody while I'm playing against him. You know, I, I just try to score and, and, and do what I can to help my team win. But as a teammate, Vaughn's a professional and that's all you could ask for, you know? And any any question that you want to ask me, Vaughn, you, you're more than welcome to. And anything that, I, any tips that I need on shooting, you know, I'll definitely ask you. Awesome, man. Well, well, Vaughn, you obviously you played in a lot of big games. And as Lester just mentioned, you know, you know, you hit big shot after big shot at different stages of your career. Um, in the PBA, is there a particular game that resonates to you or you remember? It's really how uh, the performance I made in, the, in like the finals like, really stick out. Other than that, uh, you know, every other game I treat every other game the same. It's not, nothing really special. Um, as Lester said, it's uh, you have to be professional with it, and it's my job to make open shots and make shots. So nothing special with, with what I do, I guess. You know, can you talk to us about your East Asia Super League experience and playing against? Some of the top Chinese teams. Um, you played against guys like Shunzi J. We've had on the show. Played against guys like Lance Stevenson. Um, can you talk to us about that experience and, and what it was like being against some of the top teams? Well, um, the experience I had with San Miguel. First of all, they called my old team to, I guess, ask for permission or whatever to for me to play with them um, for the East Asia Super League, and they 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 contacted me, and it was just a no brainer, you know. So. Um, went over to Philippines, you know, we trained, we practiced, you know, um, everybody has a role. So on, on San Miguel, what, what was different about um, going into play with, with San Miguel is, um, is that like on, on Colombia, you know, my role was to, to basically like uh, try to do everything and, and get teammates involved and all of that also, you know, and um, on San Miguel, my role was just to fit into what the what the coach has planned you know so you know it was, it was like a little bit different but at the same time you know i adapted quickly you know for us to compete and battle and um as well being known as one of the the um the best teams in asia you know that that's pretty cool you know so it's just it, you know experience was about just playing my role and and trying to do what i can to help the team get a win you guys had huge wins i mean you shot Shenzhen Aviator, and that was the that was a game where a lot of people had you as underdog because of the size difference. They had two seven footers, um, but you guys went up against them, especially you in the trenches with them. A bit about like you, the you know the thing. 
with with Vaughn, it was with Terrence Romeo, it was with with Dez Wells. You know, we all played our roles, you know, and and of course Dez is just so explosive offensively and Terrence is so explosive offensively, you know, and then I score and I I, I you know, I'm I'm a I'm an enforcer, you know. So, you know, it was um it was great for me, man. Th that experience was actually pretty cool. Excel at a role, you know, we could have done a lot better, you know, we could have, but you know, for what we have accomplished as a team together in in um, in, in Macau, you know, was to me, I, I feel it was a success, but we could have done better. I'm going to swing it over to Vaughn now. Uh, talk to us about your experience and, you know, what do you, what can you say about the competition and, and how it helped San Miguel throughout the, the, the last season? Yeah, you know, that tournament kind of springboarded us to the next, to the next conference. At that time, um, we didn't have uh, our big man, our six-time MVP, June Mar Fajardo. So when Lester was there, it was kind of easier for us to play even if June Mar wasn't there because he was filling in his shoes, getting rebounds, blocking shots, and uh, being uh, the guy we can go to in the post. In that tournament, um, all of us locals, we kind of play the same same way. You know, we have a big man, we have an import who's going to play with us in the next conference. It really helped our, our chemistry uh, going forward. And I think um, we started off that conference winning a couple games in a row. It's so unfortunate though, because uh, Dez got hurt. I'm, I'm biased, of course, but if you if you if you ask me, if you didn't get hurt, you probably would have won the, won the whole thing. That tournament really 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 uh, helped us a lot, especially off the court too, because you know if you're in a country or any any place, but uh, with your with your team and you're in a you don't know anybody, you're gonna spend time with each other off the court, right? So that really kind of bonded us together, uh, got us to know Dez more and Lester more. So uh, it was it was really it was really helpful for all of us. So would you what, what goes into the pre-game and post-game drip and the, and the outfit? I just try to be as simple as possible. Tell you the truth, you know, simplicity is um is very sophisticated, you know. I just try to be as I just try to be as um, simple and elegant as possible, you know. That's okay. it. That just shows up fresh every time. I, I'm definitely up there. You know, <laughs> if I'm, I might be, I might be one of the most fashionable guys, you know, period in basketball. I, I actually, I actually rock out with a brand called ASOS, you know, um, from the V necks to um, Lacoste. That's what I, that's what I wear. You know, that's just simple stuff, man. Just cool stuff. You know, that's about it. You know, that, that's why you can't hide. Yeah, you. You, once you feel, you gotta feel good, you know. And when you feel good, you dress good, you know. Exactly. Once you feel good, you dress good. So that's that's what it's about. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. You know what's right and you know what's not right. You know what's wrong. Vaughn, you're one of the brand ambassadors for one of the local Philippine basketball brands, Titan. You know, talk to us about, you know, I guess that whole experience and, and you know, being a brand ambassador for for Titan and. It's just the lifestyle that comes with it. Um, I love Titan. I love what they stand for. I want to be around this game for for a long time, if not for the rest of my life. You know, just be around it, be, be part of it. So uh, the fact that Titan uh, kind of kind of represents that kind of thinking, um, and the, the fact that I'm part of it is just—it's crazy how honored I am to be part of it. And... So Alex, let's swing it over to the challenges. So we have a we have a push up challenge. We'll just do the thirty second push up. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll do the push up. Now we're doing it at the same time, bro. You go first, Vaughn. <laughs> Are we all? No, we can right, we can't put the bar for each other. <laughs> so ready? Three, two, one, go. Three, four, five, six. Oh my God, he's a machine. This guy's a machine. <laughs> He's a machine. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Vaughn, you gotta 20, pick it up. One, you gotta pick your way up. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, five 17, seconds. 18, 19, Ready. 20, 40. One, two, two, three, four, five. Stop. Seven, stop. Eight. Stop. 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 <laughs> Pretty sure Lester won. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. 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 I'
Sound like a lot. Hey, Vaughn. Yo. You want to know something, man? I'm in the craziest shape of my life right now. <laughs> Good. I had, not, I had nothing else to do in quarantine but work out. Hey, I can see that. Yeah, we can definitely see that. You would have hey, but it. you know what? It's okay. Because Vaughn's, Vaughn's a shooter. Yeah, I don't, need to, do don't need to do push. I don't need to do this all, all this. Hey, but but don't yeah. don't be fooled. I see Vaughn gets that work in though. All right. Yeah, exactly. he, he, right absolutely. He is professional. So he does get that work in, but less is a different beast. Thanks for making me feel better, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you guys for joining us. Love to see everybody back on the court sometime soon and we got one of the East Asia Super League events. For now, you know, take care. Stay safe and uh, Lester, I know you've been working out. Vaughn, I know you stay shooting. Just keep doing your thing, man. Good luck to both of you guys. Hey guys, it's Lester Prosper. Thank you for this segment. Oh, hold on, scratch that, scratch that. Hey guys, it's Lester Prosper. Thank you for watching this segment of um what are we what were we watching again? <laughs> All the ripping. Oh, Thank you guys for joining us on East Asia Super League. This is Lester Prosper wrapping it up with Vaughn, Alex, and Banjo. Bye, guys.